Uh, that's the, the name of the presentation. I'm David Vien. Uh, I'm trying. To, it's going to be. It's going to be rough because I'm going to spend uh, an hour and trying to go from the sound chips and how to acquire them up until the point where you actually implement uh, that thing in software. Um, so, for introduction. Who might? I guess the target audience for this presentation is uh, anybody who's curious about the techie side of stuff, who's nostalgic about those sounds. Any people who want to uh, be interested somehow or know somebody who might be interested in creating uh, either a virtual instruments based on hardware, uh, improve the sounds of existing emulators because it's it's pretty hit and miss depending on where you look at. Uh, most emulators uh, have a goal which is initially to play the games and to have the graphics right and then. After a while, they, they improve the sound, but sometimes it's, uh, it's not the, the first thing they work on. Or just digital, interested in digital archaeology and trying to document uh, some of the, the more uh, obscure uh, sound strips out there. Um, why would you do that? Uh, first, because not because it's garbage. <laughs> it's because uh, I'm, I'm targeting, most of my research has been uh, put on the late 70s and early 90s sound chips and computers. Uh, uh, they're very hard to come by, especially in the working order at this point. They're 30 years old. Uh, some things inside are busted or leaking, like electronic capacitors will be uh, either dry or whatever. Uh, most of it thrown in the garbage, and some things are in very bad shape, and it's, it's, it's rare to find actual units that are in top shape. Uh, the documentation that's currently existing on them might be totally fine, as, like for instance for the SID and the NES and the Game Boy, of course, because they're so uh, ubiquitous with chip music and everybody likes them. But some of the more obscure ones might be uh, might have documentation that might be made originally, but it was only for prototype, and that's the only thing that's left. Or you'd have uh, some something that some guy reverse engineered but didn't really know what to do it, and uh, whatever his research was never got verified by somebody else. Because that's a principle of scientific uh, proofing and re repeatability: is being able to uh, analyze the same thing twice by two different teams. Um, uh, so, well, if you, well, the difference between some guy might be interested in, in emulating one particular system with what I did is that even though there were lots of documentation on many of the, those early chips, uh, I just, because I'm a geek, I just wanted to do it myself. <laughs> so even, even if the system was already well known and, and well documented, I, oh, I took it, and I took it apart, and I did some code, and I I, I did my best to make sure that what was written about it was right, and if it wasn't the case, then at least I took notes about it. Um, what you do, well, in my case, I just bought everything, or nearly everything, so I'm a very man maniac hoarder type guy. Uh, you could either uh, buy the chips separately uh, through many vendors. There's a bunch of places on the net where you could uh, either repair old arcades or old computers, in which case you'd have it's not quite clear. These are SN chips, which were in ColecoVision's and uh, Texas Instruments, HDI and 9. And uh, a different version of that is in the Sega 8 bit as a, as a custom chip, but it's not the actual discrete one like this. We don't see quite clear here is the uh, YM chip in Atari ST, which is a clone, an official clone of the AY38910. Uh, another clone of which, well, a variant of it is in the Intellivision, but it's a different key here uh, because of, and a bunch of SIDs here that uh, we don't see quite clearly, but the dates range from 90, 92, uh, 82 to 92, and there's 65, oh, I could have said that, 65, uh, 82, 8. Yeah, yeah, too stressed. So this is a bunch of night chips. This one's busted, so there's an X on it, but I, mean, I wanted to show them all. Just, uh, that's it. The oldest you go in the SID chips, the better chances that the filters are busted, or some channels are dead, or some whatever. And uh, these are very priced. If you can find an R4 uh, or AR R4, um, sometimes you'd be quite lucky. The filters are very nasty on that one, and, and uh, juicy. Uh, these later chips, uh, 95 and 80, 85, 80, sorry, are more precise in terms of filter. Some people prefer them. Anyway, you probably know the deal. This is an obscure one, which is this is the VDC and the Odyssey, so but I don't want to spend too much time on Of course, uh, some chips are only available in their original consoles. Uh, a free copy of chip sounds, anybody can name them all. <laughs> anybody who wants to try? No. Anyway, I'll, I'll show this image later. Uh, these are all my consoles, but I've got like, twice as much. Uh, I've got copies of some of them, and some of them that I don't show because they're a part of future kind of analysis that I haven't done yet, especially all the FM stuff and Genesis and whatnot. 
Um, so these could be acquired on eBay or whatever. And it's prefer preferable to have a guy saying, like showing a screenshot uh, photograph of it actually running because uh, lots of sellers don't know what they're selling. And of course, if you can find it in person, even better because you could try it and see if there isn't any products in it. Um, I didn't mention, but uh, all that presentation is based on a 20 page research that I nearly finished. <laughs> so if people, and anybody's interested, I have a lot more details, uh, techie and Mac, Mac and stuff. Uh, first thing you should do when you open up a uh, console, well, first of all, you should plug it in to see if it, it initially works. You should uh, right away just play a few games with it and record with highest quality you can the audio out of it because. You, if the console is rare and it's been haven't been plugged for a long time, I mean anything can happen. It could, the the electronic capacitor receiver might blow or whatever. So better, I'm paranoid, so I'm just trying to record as much data as possible. So uh, so you you, should, you try it. if it initially works, just okay. Close it down, open it, and just take highest quality photographs as possible of the motherboard. Uh, of course, that I'm zooming. So take notes of the clocks. Uh, that, any, any chips which are socketed that could be reseated because of the transport they might have moved or whatever. Uh, the power supply section, see if there's anything wrong with it. Um, leaky or exploded or completely dry or non-working um, electronic capacitor like this big one. This is another console. This is a super cassette vision. It's only came on Japan and, and, and in France to a limited extent. It's one that I'm still trying to reverse engineer. If you go to my blog, you'll, you'll see uh, to the extent to which I'm doing that. Uh, very simple, uh, very straightforward uh, board, very beautiful. It's the video processor, main CPU, two chips of RAM, and the sound chip, which is very obscure. Uh, this is the RF slash amplifier for audio and video. Cartridge port, it's important to check if there's any uh, rust or whatever. If I have to get on the call in English, corrosion. Uh, if there are cables and leads, just make sure they're probably seated as well. 